Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, a monument documenting miracles and answered prayers is set to be created in England. This is a massive structure that will serve as an international reminder of God's impact on people's lives. We are joined today by Richard Gamble, the creator of the Eternal Wall of Answered Prayer, a pretty incredible structure. So much backstory there. With no further ado, here is Richard Gamble. So how would you describe the Eternal Wall of Answered Prayer? So it is a a giant infinity loop. It's made of a million bricks. It's about the size of a football pitch and it sort of arcs up uh, 167 feet into the skyline. And the concept is that every single brick in this structure will represent a story of answered prayer. And people will be able to come and they'll be able to point their phone at any one of the bricks, even the ones that are miles away and the phone will light up and it will tell them the story of hope that lies within. So this is a giant monument. Yeah. It's a physical monument that also has this interactive element. Yeah. That's incredible. Why answered prayer? Uh, that was the vision that God gave me. Um, uh, 2004, I was, I know this sounds odd, I was walking across my county with a cross just to get people to think about Jesus. And I just sort of said, hey, God, what do you want me to do next? And That was the idea that sort of came in my head and I've had 10 years praying about it and then the last year, nine years, been working hard to to get this dream a reality. So you were walking across the county, I have to go back to this, with a giant cross, I'm assuming. Yeah, and I'm standard stuff. I mean, yeah, standard (laughs) stuff. If you see somebody doing that, you're paying attention. So I imagine a lot of people, but you probably thought, I'm gonna do this, I feel called to do this, grab attention, but this incredible idea comes out of this to create this yeah, I think monument. I, I would describe that back then as being like a piece of performance art. I wanted people to think about Jesus. And what happened was all these conversations were happening all over the place from people driving past. And my dad, who's not a Christian, was briefing a government minister. And he said in the middle of the briefing, this woman said, I saw the weirdest thing today. I saw a bloke carrying a cross dressed in a suit. And my dad then goes, well, that was my son, and he believes in the gospel, and this is the gospel, so he shares the gospel with the whole room. Even though he's not. Even though he's not a Christian. And so I think as I was hearing all those things, I was like, there is something about physically displaying the nature of God in a contemporary way, which which maybe can break the walls of, of you know what people perceive the church to be. So this massive monument, okay, is, is going to be built starting in 2024. Correct. We've already started the building process. We've, we've got the, the planning permission, the zoning permission. Uh, we've built the road and we're just going through the final pieces of the contracts now to get it all signed up. And then the intention is beginning at 24 and it will, it will uh, be open, ready to go in 2026. And we, uh, we're having some discussions with uh, King Charles's people to get him to come and open it. That's the plan. Wow. So this, okay. So every brick is an answered prayer. You've got a million bricks in this. Yeah. How are you collecting these answered prayers? So we are just asking the public, if you've prayed and Jesus has answered, we just want to hear your story. And so people are going online and uh, we've got a website set up for America, eternalwall.us. And we're saying, hey, just give us five minutes of your time and share your story. Because Deuteronomy 4 verse 9 says, uh, you know, don't forget what you've seen of God. Don't let it fade from your heart. Don't let it go from your memory. And make sure you tell your children and your children's children. And the power of this is, this is going to stand for hundreds of years. And so if you, if, if you can share your story now, then somebody is going to read your story, maybe in a hundred years time, 
and from your testimony discover the God who answers. And for me, that's really exciting. What does this mean? You know, in, in America, a lot of people look to the UK and they think, oh gosh, they've abandoned God. They're kind of further down the rabbit hole than we are here, yeah. although we're on our way there too. Yeah. But I'd love for you to speak to that, but what does this mean for, for the UK? What does it mean for the culture there? Well, well I, I think somebody looking from afar would go, they're in, a, they're in a whole lot of mess. But God's got a bigger plan, hasn't he? And, um, you know, I, I, I think he's going he's gonna to catch people on the back foot with this. And uh, I, I personally believe that, you know, if you share a testimony and somebody hears a story, it gives them a rise of faith. If we do that with a million, what's that going to do in the country? And I also believe, you know, God is moving in the UK. We're seeing some churches seeing explosive growth right now. And we did a, we used a research company to do some, some research after COVID. And they found that 50% of people said that they prayed during COVID. Hmm. So I don't believe they were a secular society at all. I, I believe that when, when push comes to shove, there's something in the heart of man and women who just want to reach out to God. And hopefully this monument will be able to show people that Jesus is alive, he's still at work, he's listening, and he's still doing stuff. And, you know, the idea is, you know, we are, we are grabbing tens of thousands of stories through history, but, we, but we're also doing that in the current generation. You know, the, the more you pull truth away in a culture or try to conceal it, I think the more people crave it, mm -hmm. you know, and you see that truth. manifest in different ways. Some of them are unfortunate ways. People get involved in different things trying to find the truth. Yeah. But there's still that innate quest to find it. And yeah. when, when we get the message out there, you then connect. And this is a project that will impact a lot of other people. But I have to ask you, because you had that experience in 2004. Yeah. That's almost 20 years from the time yeah. that the ground is going to be broken. It will be 20 years. Correct. What have you learned? What has God shown you through this process? Uh, he's shown me that he can do anything. He's shown me that if you, if you dream, if you've captured his dream and you pray in line with that, he can do anything. And uh, I've learned this one thing. I never let facts get in the way of truth. I've been presented with so many facts about why this can't happen. And I've believed in the truth that God has asked me to do it. And we have overcome and overcome and overcome and overcome again. Most people were giving me going, oh, that's a nice idea, Rich, I'll turn, you know. <laughs> but here we are, we're building it. What was the biggest challenge to the process? The fundraising, I mean, which piece would you say? No, without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest challenge is getting people to share their story. We have this funded. We have planning permission. I've got approval from the prime minister's office. You know, all of those things, they were hard fought, but we got them. But the hardest thing is getting Christians to give us five minutes of their time to actually share a story of what God's done. And there are so many people out there who have those stories. I mean, we, yeah. Christians have those stories. And so they need to go and share them, yeah. right, for this. And you're trying to collect a million of those, um, you know, when you when you look at this, you said in a hundred years people are going to be, you know, potentially going to this and looking at prayers that were answered long before, and these stories are going to persist. What yeah. do you hope the lasting legacy is of this? I my my aim is to proclaim the deeds of the Lord, and if you look at uh, Christ the Redeemer in Rio, everybody knows about that landmark, right? But if you Google it you just find out about some French bloke who built it. <laughs> you know, what's all that about? And, and so my hope is that this will become a global icon and people all over the world will Google and go, or whatever we do in 50, 100 years time. <laughs> and, but when they, when they do that, they find this absolutely powerful database of a million answer prayers and that God speaks to them through one of those stories that he can do it for that person and then he can do it for them. You know, God asked Noah to build a boat, right? Is this your boat? I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. There's definitely been, you know, a lot of times when people think I'm crazy. Um, I, I, believe, I believe this. I believe that we're building a nuclear bomb for the kingdom of God. And so it's really complex. A lot of people can't get their head around it. 
but man, there is a power in testimony. Revelation does talks, doesn't it? Like they overcame with, by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Well, the enemy's stuffed on the blood of the lamb. That's a done deal. But but we're gonna we're gonna nail it on the whole on the whole testimony thing here and and get the stories out to the globe of what Jesus is doing. Well, I so appreciate your time and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.